Hello, and welcome back to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and today we are continuing on with the Missing Linked Parts series of videos. We're going to talk about multi-measure rests today, which is uh, kind of related to linked parts, because I think mostly you're only going to be using multi-measure rests in linked parts, although you can technically use them in a, a score, assuming that every instrument uh, up and down the score is empty, but that's kind of a rare case. Uh, so I won't necessarily talk about that, but just uh, know that it is possible to create multi-measure rests within the score if you want. So let's just go over to a part here. And the basic idea is pretty easy. If you don't have multi-measure rests in your part already, it's pretty easy to create them. You do have to select more than one measure. So let's just select two here. And there's a couple ways to do this. We can go to the edit menu and down towards the bottom, we have multi-measure rests and we just choose create and it will create a multi-measure rest. I find the easier way to do this is to just select those measures and right click anywhere within that selection. And there's a multi-measure rest here in the contextual menu with the same option, just choose create and you've got a multi-measure rest. Now, if you have two multi-measure rests next to each other like this and you select them, and also even if you have an extra empty measure selected here uh, and you choose multi-measure rest create, it will combine them all into a single multi-measure rest. So that's also possible. The other thing that can be done, if we just zoom out a little bit, is we can actually select the entire piece and right click anywhere or go to the uh, menu and go to create. And this will create multi-measure rests in the entire piece. And obviously it will ignore all of the measures uh, with notes in it, right? There's another way that we could do this. We don't even have to have anything selected. We can go to edit multi-measure rest. There's an option here at the bottom. This only exists in the edit menu, by the way. This doesn't exist in the contextual menu. There's a fourth option here in the edit menu under multi-measure rest for create for parts score. And if we select this, we get this window and we can tell it what uh, parts we want to create them for. So we can check all or check none and select certain ones if we want, or just checked all minus the score. And when we click OK, it will create multi-measure rests for the entire piece for each linked part. Now, before I did this, there were no multi-measure rests in any of these parts. In fact, if I just undo, you'll see them all go away just like that. All right, so that's how that works. Now, once you have a multi-measure rest, let me just create another one here. Um, it's easy enough to break them. Just go to the multi-measure rest option here and choose break. There's one other option in the, this multi-measure rest uh, menu here called edit, which we're gonna deal with in the next video because we can change how they look um, and a whole bunch of other things uh, about the multi-measure rest and that's a, that'll be the next video. So it's fairly easy to create them and break them. Um, what's important to understand about multi-measure rest is some of the reasons why they may or may not uh, be created. So let's get into that a little bit now. In this flute two part, I have these first seven measures and they look empty and I'm gonna try and create a multi-measure rest and nothing happens. Uh, now the reason for this is that only default whole rests can be combined into multi-measure rests. And you would never know the difference between a default whole rest and a real whole rest. If I go over here, these guys over here are default whole rests and they can be combined. The way to actually kind of figure this out is you can do this in simpler speedy entry. Just go into the, the, uh, simp the speedy frame in this case, and you can see that there's a whole rest there. Over here in this bar, there's actually nothing here. So we know that there's actual whole rests in these bars, which will not allow us to combine into multi-measure rests. This happens from time to time with XML imports. Sometimes the XML, depending on the source, will create these blank measures as real whole rests instead of default whole rests, which would not allow you to create multi-measure rests anywhere in your document. So uh, the quick fix for this, you actually have to be in the score in order to do this, is to just select those measures where the real whole rests exist, or just select all if you know that it's a problem across the whole file and go into the plugins menu here. There's something in the note beam and rest editing option called change to default whole rest. There's change to real and change to default whole rest. That will change all of those uh, real whole rests into default whole rests. And now in your flute two part, because those are default whole rests, magically they will combine into multi-measure rests. So that's just uh, something that's fairly common with XML imports. Sometimes that happens and that's how you fix that. 
Now the other thing you could do, and this will work for this problem as well, but it also work in other situations, uh, is you can actually use a staff style, and there's a staff style that comes out of the box with Finale called Blank Notation with Rests Layer 1. And if you choose that uh, staff style, it looks like nothing changed, but it's actually putting default whole rests here. And when you have that staff style um, applied here, what will end up happening is that you can actually create a multi-measure rest now, right? There's another staff style there. Let me just show you this in a second. Let me get there. Uh, there's another one called blank notation layer one. This one is different and you can see the difference. There's actually no uh, rest there at all. These guys will not uh, combine into multi-measure rests. Only the the uh, the one that says blank notation with rests will do will uh, combine, and interestingly, you don't even have to do it on empty measures like this. You can actually use this for measures that have music. So if I were to go in here and blank notation with rests layer one, now all of a sudden it looks blank, and these measures can indeed be combined into multi-measure rests. Now, why you'd want to do this, I, I'm not quite sure, but maybe you have a specific purpose for just completely hiding some notes in, in a piece or something. Uh, this may be a way to do that. Just apply this uh, blank notation with rests layer one staff style to those measures, and then all of a sudden you're able to um, uh, use uh, multi-measure rests on there. I'm just gonna hop over to one of my bassoon parts here. There are certain things that will automatically prevent Finale from creating multi-measure rests. And the first one is certain bar lines. So if you look at this system here, if I had to try to combine these into a multi-measure rest, you will see that it will split it at the double bar line. All right, this has to do with the measure attributes for this double bar. So if I were to double click with the measure tool, the bar before the double bar line, I will see that in my measure attributes, we have the double bar line selected. And with this double bar line selection, Finale automatically checks these two options here, break a multi-measure rest, which is the one that's relevant to this discussion. And it does just that, it breaks a multi-measure rest. If you choose the normal bar line, you can see that that option automatically gets unchecked, which means it will not break a multi-measure rest. The double, the final, and the solid bar lines all have this option checked automatically. The normal, the dashed, the invisible, and the tick bar line, and the custom, I believe, if you choose that one, uh, will not check the break a multi-measure rest option. So double, final, solid will definitely break for sure, and normal will not. Now, just because it automatically checks, it doesn't mean you can't uh, change that manually. So if you want a double bar that will swallow up in a multi-measure rest, just uncheck that option. Uh, likewise, you can take any measure with a normal bar line and check this option to break a multi-measure rest. And with that option checked, you can try and combine these multi-measure rests and you'll see that it will not combine uh, where that split happens. So uh, using that, um, that uh, option in the measure attributes to break a multi-measure rest is really, uh, uh, can be a useful thing. In fact, there's a really nifty trick I wanna show you right now if you don't mind. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all with the, uh, the measure tool, right? And with all selected, if you double click you get the measure attributes for the entire piece. So measure attributes for measures one through 359. And with all selected, this sort of acts as a mass change window here. And what's really nifty is that you can do something like uh, select four here, change every four measures. Now this will be useful if you're doing like commercial music and you want to make sure that uh, you're not creating multi-measure rests that are longer than four measures. This is exactly how you would do this. So just select the entire piece, change every four measures, and where it says break a multi-measure rest, you'll see a dash here. This is just indicating that some of the measures have this option checked and some of them do not have it checked. But if you may change that dash to a check mark, what you're doing is you're telling Finale to force every fourth measure to break a multi-measure rest. And when you click OK, um, you'll see the result of this. If you go out and, and individually check the measure attributes, the second bar does not have it. The third bar does not have it. But the fourth bar does have this break a multi-measure rest checked and so does the eighth bar, 12th, 16th, etc. So with that option checked, you can then go and select all and multi-measure rest create 
and you'll end up with a situation where you'll never get a you'll never get a multi-measure rest with more than four uh, measures to it. So that can be really handy, and you can do that every eight bars, every four bars, however, however you want to do that. Let me just make sure I've undone that correctly. There we go. Other things that will not combine in multi-measure rest, and I won't demonstrate them all, but I'll sort of list them here. Time signature changes and key signature changes will not um, combine into multi-measure rest, which is important because you don't want to swallow those up. Certain expressions will also break multi-measure rest, and this depends on the expression uh, and actually depends on the category. So if I look at my tempo marks here, I'm just going to add a tempo mark to this measure and try and combine these measures here, and you'll see that it will break at where I put that tempo uh, expression. And the reason for this has to do with the category designer for the tempo marks. So if we go into the expression selection, choose edit category, you'll see uh, with the tempo marks category selected here, there's this option called break multi-measure rests. Now, not all categories have this option. In fact, it's only the system categories that have this option. Things like dynamics is not a system ca uh, expression. This is a staff specific expression, so that option doesn't even exist. But certain things like tempo marks, tempo alterations, which is a system expression, but it also does not have this checked, and rehearsal marks will also break multi-measure rest. So this is the way that Finale sets us up out of the box. Uh, I have a lot more info about this category designer in one of the uh, expression videos, which you can check out if you want. But you can basically create more categories with this option checked or not. So there's other ways to use expressions to break multi-measure rest like this. But anyway, because this option is checked, that's what's preventing the multi-measure rest from combining in this particular case. Now, regular expressions, or I should say staff-specific expressions like, you know, forte markings, these will not prevent uh, multi-measure rests from uh, creating. Now, obviously, you probably wouldn't put a forte marking in the middle of an empty measure, but there might be other instruction that you need to put in here as an expression. The thing is that you can't put it in the middle of a multi-measure rest. Staff-specific expressions will appear at the beginning of a multi-measure rest. So if that expression exists in the very first measure, it will remain there. So that's the trick to this. And in fact, if you have the multi-measure rest there already, you can add whatever expression you want. Um, just silly stuff that I'm adding here, but you can add whatever expression you want and it will actually appear. The thing is just realize that this expression really is attached to the very first measure. So if you break the multi-measure rest, you'll see that it's actually attached to that first measure. Now this is true, uh, I won't necessarily demonstrate this, but this is true whether or not this expression is attached to the left side of the measure or sometimes expressions can actually be attached to the right bar line. Even if you attach this to the right bar line, um, it still gets attached to the first measure of the multi-measure rest. So that can come into play sometimes when you have an expression that's supposed to sit at the bottom right of a multi-measure rest. You might think it's attached to this last measure, but it's actually attached to this measure. The other thing that will break multi-measure rest, and this probably makes sense, is uh, repeat bar lines. So if I try and uh, you know create a multi-measure rest here, you'll see that obviously the, the repeat bar lines will break that multi-measure rest. Also, text repeats will as well. So if I were to, oops, tech, uh, repeat tool. If I were to add a fine marking here, for example, and uh, put it there, you can see that this is right justified. And what this will do is it will actually break the multi-measure rest in the right spot so that that fine marking is at the end of this multi-measure rest. And then what's really nifty is that uh, if you add a different text expression like this uh, coda marking here, which gets left justified in the measure, then combining these multi-measure rests will uh, combine correctly so that this uh, coda marking gets put at the beginning of this uh, multi-measure rest. So depending on the justification and alignment of these text repeats, it will break the multi-measure rest in the appropriate spot, which is nice. Some things that won't break multi-measure rests, like, you know, not that you would ever do this, but if you just have, you know, a random clef change without any data and try and combine the multi-measure rests, they definitely will still combine. So clefs in and of themselves will not prevent uh, multi-measure rests from creating. 
Instrument changes will also not prevent multi-measure rest unless the instrument change also includes a transposition change because then the key changes as well. And then because of the key change, it will prevent the multi or it will break the multi-measure rest. And then another thing that does not uh, break multi-measure rests is actually system locks. You would think that it probably would. So, you know, if you think about, okay, I'm going to combine all of this into two multi-measure rests or three, however, with the Fermata and everything here, um, you know, what's going to happen is that it's actually going to put it on one system because the multi-measure rests across these two systems, it's going to allow them to create regardless of the fact that you had both of those systems locked and then you just lost a system. So um, although it seems like system locks should uh, break multi-measure rest, they actually don't. And then finally, let me just set something up here. I'm going to create a bunch of multi-measure rests in a row with four measures. Let's see if I can do this quickly. Multi-measure rests, bear with me. All right. And Let's say I'm not going to lock this for now. There is a thing in Finale called the fit measures function. And on a Mac, it's uh, command shift M to get the fit measures window. Now, we do have an option to lock layout with four measures per system. And this sub option here is what I'm interested in talking about right now. The treat multi-measure rests as one measure. So with this checked, basically what this is going to do is going to take all four of these four bar multi-measure rests and put it on one line just like that. It's treating each of these multi-measure rests as a single bar. Now, for a lot of us that do uh, commercial music, this is actually not the way we want to do this. We want each one of these four bar multi-measure rests to have its own system so that there literally is four bars on a system. So if you uncheck this option, then it's going to treat every, it's going to count every bar within the multi-measure rest in this lock layout with four measures per system uh, situation. So then you'd see something different where, okay, this actually does have four measures. This line has four measures because it's actually four measures. And each of these has four actual measures instead of, you know, four multi-measure rests. So that's also sometimes a thing to be aware of when, when you're laying out commercial music and you want phrases on each line, four bars or eight bars or a, a system or whatever it is you're doing. Uh, just be aware of that option, treat multi-measure S as one measures in the fit measures window. There's something very similar in the manage parts. If you're going into the part creation preferences um, under the fit four measures per system, this basically does that same function, but it will do it automatically when you uh, generate your parts and it works the same way. You can fit four measures per system, um, either treating multi-measure rests as one measures or not treating them as one measure. So uh, doing it here would, uh, would do that automatically when you generate the parts, if you're creating multi-measure rests when you generate the, the uh, parts to begin with. All right, so that kind of covers it. I talked a lot about um, all the things that can be done creating multi-measure rests and, and all the pitfalls there and, and everything. So hopefully this has helped. Um, in the next video, we're going to look at the edit multi-measure rest window. And this is going to be where we can actually design these a little bit, make some changes and do some other things. So uh, we're going to talk about this and the uh, global version of this, which exists in the document options uh, under multi-measure rest. It's a very similar looking uh, options here. So that's what we're going to talk about next. And uh, so, yeah, so there we are. So thanks for watching. Uh, once again, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I will see you soon on the next The Missing Linked Parts video.